Hi, everybody. Today I'm going to continue reading Operation Frog Effect and starting with Chapter 2. Chapter 2 starts with this chart that says voting on a name for our class frog. Name ideas, number of votes. Kermit, 5. Harold, 4. Petunia, 5. Frog G, 4. Mr. Frog, 5. Mrs. Frogarina, 4. Renita, Spanish word for little frog, 4. Jeremiah, the bullfrog, 1. Kermit versus Petunia versus Mr. Frog. Name ideas, number of votes. Kermit, 12. Mr. Frog, 10. Petunia, 10. Introducing Kermit. Okay, the first person writing um, is Emily. Dear Hope, I told Aviva and Kaylee that we should all write Ms. Graham letters to ask her to let us to be in the same group. I was way too scared to go straight up to Ms. Graham and talk to her about it, especially after she shut me down in class. But I thought maybe if Aviva and Kaylee and I all wrote her, she'd listen. Aviva smiled and nodded at first, but then after Kaylee said, can't you take a hint? She already told you no. Aviva stopped nodding. Well, I'm going to write one anyway. Kaylee and Aviva are acting strange. I'm not sure what's up. They've been wearing their rainbow bracelets all week, but never gave me one. And I just noticed they had matching ankle bracelets today too. Love and luck, Emily. Dear Ms. Graham, I know you said no changing groups. I promise I'm not trying to argue. I want you to know that Aviva, Kaylee, and I have been best friends since second grade. Mom says it's hard to have a group of three because someone can be left out, but it's not normally like that for us. Only now they're laughing at jokes I don't understand and dressing like twins and eating their lunches really fast before I even sit down. This is our last year together. Kaylee's parents are putting her in a private middle school, so she'll be leaving the rest of us. That's why this year is extra important. This will all be better if you put me in their group, please, from Emily. Aviva, date, September 8th. Kaylee says we have to let Emily make new friends, that it's for her own good. This hurts my heart, but she's probably right. Emily only hangs out with us, and we only hang out with her, so it usually works out okay. But I just found out that Ima and Abba, that's what I call my parents, are sending me to La, Vin La Ventana Prep next year for middle school. Say what? I thought I'd stay in public school. Kaylee's going to La Ventana too. Her parents reserved a spot there when she was in kindergarten. My parents signed me up last week, before they talked to me about it, by the way. Ima and Abba said they'd heard horror stories about public middle school. Horror stories? What exactly does that mean? When I asked, all I got was bullies and cigarettes. So middle school has bullies? Big whoop. Bullies are everywhere. I'll survive. And do my parents seriously think I'd try a cigarette? I may not be a genius, but I'm not a complete idiot either. I like my teeth white and my lungs pink. Thank you very much. No matter how much I argued that I'd be fine in public middle school, they couldn't hear me. I told them that La Ventana is all girls and probably all rich girls. I won't fit in at all. But then they said it's the only non-Christian based private school in the county, we're Jewish, and public middle school is not on the table, so it's La Ventana or back to home schooling. Yikes. They hugged me and told me they just want what's best for me. They are so strict and they think they know best all the time. This is exactly why I don't share my thoughts. It's like I'm yelling underwater and all I'm getting is wet. After a while, I stopped arguing and sat there, deflated like a balloon. P.S. I'm worried about the frog. I did some research last night and found out that wild frogs have difficulty surviving in captivity. The trick is to make sure you know the type of species so you can have the right habitat I printed out the article, but I don't want Ms. Graham to think I'm trying to tell her what to do. Maybe I'll just set the article on her desk at recess. Sharon, I work alone, mostly. Sure, I sit in a table group. Sure, we talk, but they all think I'm weird. It's okay, I am weird. I don't have three eyes or purple polka dots, but there's something about me that's different. And sometimes different means strange. Mom says it's because I don't care about what other people think, but she's wrong. I do care about what people think. I find it fascinating, but I don't care to change me in order to make them like me. Kaylee, dear Ms. Graham, Emily's going to write you a letter asking you to switch her group. No offense to Emily, but we don't want to be in her group. Emily will need to find new friends before middle school since Aviva and I are both going to La Ventana Prep next year. She's way too dependent on us. If we keep hanging out with her, she'll never branch out. It's for her own good. There's no way Emily's mom could afford to send her to La Ventana. 
Emily's smart enough, but they only give full scholarships to geniuses. Poor Emily. Her dad took off to explore faraway places like Lebanon and Armenia, and her mom paints for a living, for real, and practically makes no money. P.S. No offense, Ms. Graham, but it's kind of a waste of time for us to be researching types of frogs. A frog is a frog is a frog. Who cares what kind it is? It's gross no matter what. Emily. Status. Sad face. Dear Hope. Ms. Graham called me up to her desk to talk today. I got that, oh no, I'm in trouble feeling. My throat tightened up right away. I couldn't meet her eyes, so I stared at her dangly earrings. She thanked me for my letter, but said it was important to keep the seats consistent. Right away, I felt tears pushing at the bridge of my nose. I hadn't cried in school since second, since third grade, and I sure didn't want to break my record. Ms. Graham started to say something else, but I just needed to get out of there because those tears were about to burst free. After lunch, I found this note on my desk. Dear Emily, we spoke briefly today, but I wanted to add a few thoughts. Please know that I admire it when students stand up for themselves. I understand your reasons for wanting to switch groups. However, let's give our seating arrangement a chance. If you're still concerned about this issue in a few months, we can always take it to a class vote. Let's wait until after Thanksgiving and see how you feel then. In life, the most challenging experiences are also the most rewarding. I encourage you to stick it out. Spread your wings and try something different. This is how we grow. I do want to tell you that your letter has sparked an idea. Mailboxes. We will all make mailboxes on our desks, myself included. I'll encourage our students to send each other letters throughout this year. Thank you for helping me think outside the box. Sincerely, Ms. Graham. P.S. Talk to Sharon. She has lots to say. I wanted to rip her letter into shreds. Doesn't she know she's ruining my life? Henry. Scene. Students mill about the room working on a babyish project, making mailboxes out of wrapping paper covered shoe boxes. Kai. Can I swap with someone? The only wrapping paper we had at home has floating babies and rattles. Henry. I have silver. You want silver? Hi, thank you, you saved my life. Henry, my powers surprise even me. Aviva, did you see that Ms. Graham is wrapping her box in froggy covered wrapping paper? I wonder if she had that at home or if she bought it just for this. Kaylee, who cares? Wrapping paper and letter writing are both killing trees. It's entirely ungreen and global warming-ish. Henry, that's not a word. Kaylee, you knew what I meant. Like, this is a trick to make us write more. Henry, all theatrical. Curses, the scoundrels trying to force us to learn. I'm onto her sneaky plan. Aviva, softly. It is kind of fun, though. It might be fun to write letters, too. Henry, no way. You sounded like Minnie Mouse just then. Aviva turns red. Henry, maybe you should do voiceover work in cartoons. I have an auntie who does that. She's got a high-pitched voice, too. Aviva, uh, okay. Kaylee, is everything a joke to you? Henry, yep. Pretty much. Haven't we been over this before? It's called wit. Kaylee. Yeah, maybe dim wit. Blake. I think you're funny. Henry. See? Someone who appreciates my humor. Cecilia. Hola, Abuelita. Today I put stickers all over my journal and added some to my mailbox. I don't want anyone to mistake my journal for theirs. I'm sharing my heart with you, Abuelita, and I don't want anyone from my class reading my private thoughts. Ms. Graham promises she's not reading our journals either. Don't worry, I remember what you said. I know to be careful about sharing our situation. Ms. Graham is funny. She puts all these sticky notes around her desk to remind her to do things. Some of them are practical, like pick up dog food after work or prep for Tuesday's lesson. Those practical sticky notes disappear and then new ones appear each day. But she also has silly sticky notes that just stay stuck day after day, like breathe or be here now or being in the now. What do you think, Abuelita? If she can't remember to breathe, she might have a bigger problem than a hungry dog. If I wrote myself a silly reminder sticky note like Ms. Graham's, it would be relax. No one needs to remind me to breathe. I've got that one down. Guess what? I'm starting to like Kermit. Remember how I used to get all creeped out by lizards? Kermit's a whole different story. I stop by his habitat slash tank every morning and say, hola, Ranita. I swear he stares right at me and says, croa, croa. Looks like I've got a new friend, Abuelita. Words to practice. Stickers equals Colcomanias? I'm not sure if I said that right. Bezos y Abrazos, Cecilia. And the next entry is from Blake. It says, Blake, wasting class time 101. And there he is throwing some wrapping paper 
the teacher comes and says, uh-oh, and gets back to work. And it looks like he has a message. The next entrance entry is from Sharon. I slipped a note in Blake Benson's mailbox. All it said was, have a nice day, because he doesn't fit in either. He tries to, but it's like he's mixed up, being cool with being bad and thinks one equals the other. Blake feeds the frog th fresh, crunchy crickets and hangs out by the habitat. Maybe he's watching, worried, Kermit won't recover from her injuries, or maybe it's just another way Blake can avoid the mean kids. He cares that he doesn't fit. I see it in the way his shoulders hunch and his mouth curves down. He notices the way the others scramble and scooch to the middle of the lunch benches so there's no room for him. I invite him over to my table in the corner, but it doesn't make his shoulders straighten out. It's easier to be like me and not care. And then she had put like a little asterisk after her. And over here it says, why does everyone assume that the frog is a boy? And that's the end of chapter two. We'll read chapter three now too. Okay, so chapter three starts with fun frog facts, table group activity. Research and gather as many fun frog facts as you can. As soon as you find one, write it on a sticky note. Complete as many sticky notes as possible. You have 30 minutes and go. Underneath it says candy frog gummies will be involved. No actual frogs were injured in the making of these gummies. And the next page is also one I thought you would want to see. Here are some stickers. They say frogs shed their skin once a week, then eat it. And it says yuck next to that. Frogs drink water through their skin instead of through their mouths. Most frogs have teeth in their upper jaw. Male Darwin frogs swallow developing tadpoles. They keep them in their vocal sacs until they're ready to come out as juvenile frogs. And that says, ew. A group of frogs is called an army. Male frogs attract female frogs by croaking, not the dying kind of croaking, but the sound kind of croaking. Many frogs can leap more than 20 times their body length. And the last one, the golden poison dart frog has enough venom to kill 10 grown men. Wow. Okay. And you can see the first entry is from Aviva. Date, September 12th. Every time I see Emily, my stomach hurts. This morning, she put a note in my mailbox. Aviva, what's going on? Please talk to me. Maybe we can walk to school together tomorrow morning. Your bestie since second grade, Emily. That last line made my throat prickle. Emily and I have been best friends ever since I rescued her. Two weeks after Emma stopped homeschooling me, she enrolled me in second grade. All the kids knew each other already and everyone had paired up. Emily and I were seat buddies, but I don't think we said more than 10 words to each other until I lied for her. Cranky Ms. McFarley never let us use the bathroom after recess. This was supposed to teach us to use our time wisely and be responsible enough to go potty instead of play handball all recess long. Really, this taught us to hold our pee longer. One time, Emily couldn't hold it and she wound up peeing a big old puddle in her chair. I told everyone I'd spilled my water bottle and she'd sat in it. When Emily came back to class with fresh loner shorts from the nurse's office, she shot me this grateful look and we became instant best friends. Suddenly, school was fantastic. We got even closer when her parents divorced because Emily wanted to sleep over a lot. My parents prefer to host the sleepovers because overprotective is their middle name. So having Emily over was a win-win. Kaylee's our third, even though she and Emily hung out before I came along. Kaylee's the kind of friend you have to be careful not to make mad. Sometimes she can be mean. Only now everything is changing and I don't know how to stop it. I need to stay on Kaylee's good side because we'll be together next year. I don't want to have to sit alone at lunch. The chance that I'll rescue another friend from a puddle of pee is low. I can't walk with Emily because Kaylee will get mad and Emily will ask me questions I don't know how to answer. I can just imagine her saying, you know how Kaylee is. Why are you letting her make all the decisions? Don't you have your own opinion? And I'd be all silence. Because what can I say to that? Of course I have opinions. I have tons of them. But having them doesn't mean I can share them or stand up to Kaylee about them. I slipped a note in Emily's box right at, before lunch. Dear Emily, I'm getting a ride tomorrow. We'll talk soon, Aviva. Truth, I'm not getting a ride tomorrow, but I can walk a different way to school. That way I won't run into Emily. Sometimes life is so complicated. Okay, and the next entry is Blake's. 
Um, so in this, Blake says, can I pick some grass for Kermit's habitat? And the teacher says, sure. There's the principal looking mad. My history of trouble, first grade, third grade, now, always in the principal's office. And there's the principal saying to his teacher, you have to watch this one closely. And his teacher says, I gave him permission. Oops, let me go back a couple there. Um, this entry is from Kaylee. Dear Ms. Graham, not to be a tattletale, but do you know that Blake is only drawing in his journal every day? How does he get away with that? Don't you notice when you walk around? Just because he goes to resource class for English doesn't mean you should let him slack off. And can you please give Sharon a quote of her comments? That girl needs to zip it. Teachers always think she's brilliant, but the truth is that she reads history books for fun. Who does that? No offense, but has anyone explained to you the purpose of sticky notes? They're to remind you to do things. You've got at least 12 on your desk right now. That's like reminder overload. I'm not sure it's helpful. And do you really need a note to remind you to laugh often? Please. Last thing, don't you think it's unsanitary to have students bringing in bugs for Kermit to eat? I know you've got that antibacterial hand wash, but still gross. P.S. I will tell Emily that Aviv is going to La Ventana soon. Awkward. Okay, that's the end of chapter three. And we'll read chapter four and chapter five soon. Hope you guys are all doing well. I miss you.